as much and as often as it was capable. Insert credit tried to bring the most toxic parts of video game culture and the industry to task. So I suppose I have to ask, what the hell is wrong with video games? I mean, where to begin here? One of the things to understand about video games is that they're just one of like countless forms of expression that we have like as people, right? Anything that we do as people, it's imbued with a certain meaning that comes from our understanding of the world that we live in, whether that's conscious or not. And, you know, one is slightly more conscious and we call that art. The thing about video games is that th their whole background is frankly in gambling. And you still see that these days with like honing of current triple A games for like the jot of brain hormones people can get, get from like moment to moment as they play through like the major set pieces or whatever to like the loot boxes and everything like that. But it goes back to like pinball. I mean, pinball was like an evolution of pachinko so they could get around the bands over gambling machines, right? I mean, there's a reason why you put the coin in the slot there. It's from this whole history. So like the whole psychology behind video games, there are ways to have a very interesting and constructive sort of discussion with this. I mean, if you look at the actual language of video games, it's basically about an understanding of like cause and effect of a certain bottled world, like a premise of like how things can be. And you bash your head against it, see what works, see what doesn't work in order to understand somebody's perspective of causal reality that we live in. And there are a lot of interesting discussions that could happen there, but usually the way that video games are used, it's like this behaviorist garbage. It's like a you know feeder pellet thing where they feed people little bits of stimulation and reward in order to keep them going. It creates this kind of like a mania. The more that you play them, the more that you engage with this kind of a psychology, it messes with your own psychology just through like repetition, through reinforcement and like this expectation that you're going to get a reward no matter what you do, that you have to do everything, that nothing that you do matters unless it like achieves like a you know, successful outcome. Like a lot of the communication language is based around violence. And so it's, that's like kind of an incidental thing, but not an insignificant one. I'm not saying that it's necessarily like playing video games is going to turn you into a psychopath, but I'm saying this sort of level in which video games tend to engage people in conversation, it tends to be on a very base level. And this tends to lead to certain kinds of thinking, the more that people get engrossed in gamer culture that bleeds into the rest of their lives. I've been saying since way before Gamergate that gamers are the worst people on earth. And I don't think that that's too much of an exaggeration considering everything that's come out of it, considering how, you know, Steve Bannon knew, he knew how bad this whole thing was. And then nobody cared that this would be like the perfect test case for starting fascism in the United States because people aren't looking that closely, because people don't take it very seriously, and because it has such base, easy stimulation that makes it very easy to manipulate people. And this kind of a manipulation poisons people's brains the more that it's reinforced. The amount of literacy with which most people, I mean, understandably, engage with video games, they're just looking to have a good time. They're not looking to find new and interesting ideas or new experiences or new, look at new perspectives in the world as they might when engaging with like other forms of expression, they might have to think about more or that, that have more of like a reputation of being like deep thought things. With video games, they just think, oh, I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to have my little bit of reward from my life that is completely unrewarding to me. You know, everything that I'm doing in this capitalist society, which is making me feel uh, dehumanized, here I get to feel like the center of the world. Everything is built around me. Everything is built around making me feel good. If you're not thinking about that very critically and you're just pouring yourself into it, that's not all that different from like pouring yourself down like, an Alex Jones wormhole. And video games have very much the same effect, or they can, depending on how you engage with them and what kinds of games you're engaged with. I think more so than a lot of other media because they demand active engagement, but it's on this really gross level. Those roots are definitely palpable throughout the entirety of games. Right. But I, I think that recently in the last like five years, people have actually started to try to think about it and address it. I mean, there are a lot of interesting indie games out there where people are like, they're actually trying to express like ideas that are meaningful to them through like what language that they can. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes those have interesting things to say. And not only that, but they don't demand that I expend all this portion of my life 
in order to engage with their crap. And so they just ask a modest amount of my time in order to have like more, a more honest conversation. And so I still don't play like a lot of video games still. I just like, I got other stuff to do. 